Hello everyone, we're back with viewer's choice and I'm Dennis Borosh and those are footsteps you're hearing. And they're coming the other direction, not this way. So hello everybody. The first game is going to be played between two people, the pious patriot and the beef. Let's see if they have something to tell us. No, just check out this game. We will do so. So e4, e5, knight f3, b6. This is heading towards a Philidor type position. Bishop c4. Uh, some would just play d4 instead. And just claiming that we have lots of pressure against the pawn. Actually, like two ways of defending or pseudo defending the pawn. Either defending with knight d7, queen e7, which is funny looking, but it's not bad. Or knight f6, which I played and I don't recommend anyone to do it ever. Because white could take, knight takes, and they'll just keep chasing this knight. And that's never fun. That's never fun. So. There's nothing wrong with bishop c4. Queen e7 was played anyways. d4, h6. Now, if you look at this position, what would be our first gut reaction? Who do we like more? Black hasn't developed a minor piece. Yeah, black hasn't done much. What's the positives for white's perspective? Of the center, two minor pieces developed, ready to castle. Yeah. A lot of pieces out. But there's one thing that quite messes up in this game, meaning he she doesn't really understand how you need to punish your opponent when they're lagging in development. Now D five is a huge mistake here. Why is d5 such a big mistake in this position? Ahead in development, you want to open the position. Yeah. d5 closes the center. Yeah, d5 definitely closes the center, and as you pointed out, you need to open up the position. So let's be better than Pius Patriot and try to find a better way. Actually, d5 is not too good. Like, it's, it's mostly... d takes e5. d takes e5. That's a good idea. How would you follow it up after d takes, though? Castle and look mm -hmm. to double on the d file. Mm -hmm. And doubling on the d file, that's reasonable. What else could white do here? There's one more idea that wasn't mentioned yet. Is it tactical or positional? Oh, it's more like, yeah, it's more of a positional idea. It's not like you're winning yet. I would just play nice. Yeah, knight c3, that's a very good move. And what's your idea here? Um, I mean, it's just more control. Just control. Mm -hmm. Actually, you also have the idea of jumping to d5. Yeah, tempo on the queen. Tempo on the queen, which would be huge. You're already like three moves up. But you would force black to play c6. And now, obviously, you can continue with the idea of castling and trying to rush your opponent down the board. But with black playing c6, d5 is not entirely stupid now. Because we are threatening to take on c6, and then the position opens up. And if, like, let's say, takes, normally 
We like to take stuff with development, but then we can jump to d5. And already this situation is like quite pleasant for white. So they would have to resort to like moves like c5, which is just ugly. Now again, I'm not saying we're winning and we're usually not winning when the position is close. With these pawns like blocking the way, it's hard for white to win the game immediately. But in the long term, white is a lot of development. So let's say we castle. Okay, g6. We need to find a way here to break through. Where could we potentially break through in this position with white? Obviously, we have lots of time. It's a closed position, so you can maneuver your pieces around before you execute the opening move. So actually, these positions are tricky because if we wait for too long, then black will have the time to castle. Yes, rook b1, b4 is a good idea. Here, let's say they ignore us. And the good thing is, as the bishop moves away, this d6 pawn gets really weak. So just with, let's say, a6, bishop a3, and then we will slowly, slowly have ideas of attacking that pawn. Let's say knight f6, I'm just playing a really not good move. Rook b6, and already this d6 pawn is dropping. Rook b1 was really good. And this is a typical idea in these closed positions to open up this black center with b4. The other technique that we use is knight e1. Wonder where this knight, knight is headed. Hmm? D3. Yeah, d3. D3 and then play f4 next move. Yes. It's like bishop g7, knight d7. Say knight d7 and f4. Now, usually black takes the pawn because if white gets the chance to push it to f5, it's just going to be a one sided game. So black would take. How should we take back? Bishop. Bishop, yes. Because if we take with the knight, then this knight is really not doing anything. In fact, after knight to e5, this knight on e5 is way better than this one on f4. And that's because it has an outpost. That's usually created when you have a pawn that supports your knight and it anchors it. Now, that's why bishop takes f4, knight f6. And in fact, we have this really nice little tactical idea of e5, which is very typical in many, many closed openings, this e5 strike. Especially that the black king is not castled. And that's why we castle quickly. I would advise everybody to castle quickly. Because here it takes, you can even sacrifice here. Takes, bishop takes e5. It's a free piece, it seems. But, but now we have this nasty little pin, rook e1. And yeah, you can move the king, but then you drop your queen. So there's only one way to defend it right now, and that is to blockade this idea. That's knight e4, but then we can just capture with the rook, because it can be captured because knight takes e4. Okay, we had a little bit of a detour, but this is how you're supposed to play close positions with white. If your opponent is closing the position, you're supposed to open it somehow. So in this position, we figured we have to maneuver this knight all the way to d3 to open up the position. So he played d5. As we already said, this is not a good idea because we're supposed to open the position in the first place. Now black, our opponent, is not in any trouble anymore. Knight f6, knight d2, knight d2. Not happy with knight d2. I'd still like the knight on c3 instead. 
Because the knight on d2 is very passive. It only defends this pawn. Okay, it defends this bishop as well, but it doesn't do anything apart from that. So knight d2, bishop g4, b3. Okay, a little bit strange, but it's okay. Knight h7, again, a bit strange. How could we develop with black in this position? Knight h7 is an okay move, but you should play something else, I think. What other ideas we could have here with black? Notice our king is not in any safety on e8. So what should we do then if our king is unsafe? Actually, just raise your hand if you have an idea. I'll call on you. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Really have any good yeah. The queen is a bit weirdly placed, but it's not like a big issue. As I said, the position is so close that. Yeah. So g6 is an idea. All right, let's say g6. Here, here. And what should we play with both colors now? Because if we think about it, both kings are kind of unsafe there. Castle, castle. Castle, castle. Castles, castles. And now it's going to be a long game, but we know that our king is in safety, which is very important. All right, so this is ignored by both. We play knight h7, bishop b2, knight g5. Which is nice, because he is trying to enforce this pin, but this knight on d2 defends everything. So even though this knight on d2 is passive, it defends these crucial pawns and knights. So okay, h3, obviously he wants to get rid of that bishop. Queen e2, a6, g4. This is okay. Bishop g6, long castle. Now... You can't short castle anymore, because then you would lose the pawn on h3 in knight f4, and this is lost. So white already has no choice but to castle long. But castling long always entails danger. Mostly because it's much easier to attack a king when it's on the queen side. Knight d7, h4, knight takes f3, takes knight c5. So what's the biggest concern in this position with white right now? What does our opponent want to do right now? He, yeah, just brought... So this bishop was already attacking the e4 pawn. How many pieces we need to actually win this pawn? So there's one defender here, defending the pawn, one attacking. Is that enough? Is that enough to capture that pawn? Not really. We need to bring another attacker just to overload on e4. Now we have two defensive methods in this position. Which one should we choose? I mean, this e4 pawn is hanging. The screen cannot defend it by itself. Mm -hmm. Bishop d3, that's an idea. How else could, we, apart from bishop d3, how else could we defend the e4 pawn? Knight d2. Knight d2. Yeah, so there's knight d2 and bishop d3. Now, white played h5, missing that the pawn was just hanging. So that's not good. Now, what's wrong with bishop d3 in general? I'm not, I don't, as I, as you can tell, I'm not happy with the bishop move to d3. What's something that's kind of bad about this move? Well, the thing is, 
I can take this bishop anytime I want and you can never move it because let's say I play queen d7 I can't move it because you just take the pawn if I move this pawn now again I can take it and uh, so instead knight d2 is just better because your opponent just can't take your bishop yet at least now he can force you to move the bishop and do this but at least there's a level of concession here by black. I'm not saying it's terrible, but it's something. Okay, so h5, bishop takes e4, b4. So white is trying to open up stuff and initiate some action, just in the wrong way. Because black has this move, bishop takes f3. Otherwise it would work, because if you have to move the knight, I can take your bishop. But obviously, black can just take this, take, and knight a4. And especially in closed positions, try to have knights. Because these, these bishops just are useless in this position. They don't do anything. So queen b3, b5, rook e1, knight b2. Again, missing a tactical idea. Having the concept almost right. He does want to open up the position, but there were like threats. Like this pawn is heavily threatening, taking on c4, so bishop d3 was a must. So rook e1, knight b2, takes. The rest is basically agony. Black is just up a piece, and c5 is a little sketchy, it's a bit too much. Black didn't need to give away an extra pawn here. Could have just gone king e7 and win. But okay, this position is just so winning for black that any kind of mistakes is enough. So it was kind of an easy win. So I wanted to show game two where both players handled close position much better than the first one. It's not flawless. But they handle it way better. So b3, Larsen strikes again, c5, e6, d3, knight c6, knight d2. So it's kind of like a reverse Nimzo Indian, if you're familiar with that. It's basically this opening d4, f6, c4, b6, this. And that's a castle take. But reversed colors is the same system, same concepts. That's what white is aiming for in this game. E3, although without the bishop moving out. Knight f3, knight f6, bishop e2. Now bishop e2 is a bit conservative. Actually, there's a better way of developing your pieces if you play this kind of position. How could we improve on our bishop instead of putting it on e2? There's actually two ways to achieve that. G3 or d4. d4 is mm -hmm. a little bit weird because you play d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as you said, d4 is, would be a little weird because you already played d3 and you're wasting time. But then you can actually move your bishop to d3, which is much better than e2. Yeah. So this is like a give and take in chess. Sometimes you sacrifice time just to make a better move. And actually, g3 is the same concept. You sacrifice time for a better piece, yeah. saying that Okay, okay, you got an extra move, but I got an extra, extra good bishop on g2. We have two monsters just slashing down the board. And when you play bishop e2, you're kind of saying, oh, one is enough. But in chess, just take any benefits and advantages you can get, because you might not get it back ever. d5, which is a decent move. But sometimes in chess you can try to play against your opponent. White only has one really good piece, and that's the bishop on b2. So how can black possibly play against that?
Think about walling in this bishop. If it hits the brick wall, it can be useless. Yes? So then e5 and preparing d6? Mm -hmm. Well, if you play e5, I can take you, because yeah. I attacked you twice. Two, so yeah. D6, yeah, d6. E5. And then e5. And this was actually one of the spectacular concepts that Fisher used against Larsen. Actually, Petrosian, sorry. But the uh, Larsen system. Petrosian did go with this knight f3, b3 b, b ideas, but then Fisher played d6, e5, and that bishop was out of the game forever. This is actually even better because of these two pawns. Because white would try to play d4, but here I can take, take e4, and just build a center. And still your bishop on b2 is just horrible. So d6 would have been a really good idea here. So he played d5, which gave breathing space for this bishop, which is not a good idea if you're black. Castles, bishop d7, knight e5. A very classical Nimzo Indian way of playing. But again, already, white could have tried c4. Takes, he would obviously take towards the center, and we would be planning d4 ideas. And it's a game, but I like white, because white has this really nice bishop on b2, while black really doesn't have this extra good piece. Let's play knight e5, knight takes, takes, queen e7. Queen e7, it's too passive. Even in the previous game we saw it's too passive. So how else could black develop here? Bishop e7 and castles. Yeah, bishop e7 and castles. And that's fairly normal. The other thing that you could do is bishop c6 with the same concept that I kind of laid out before. Meaning, I could put this bishop on e7, but I would be happiest to put this bishop on d6 and be more active. And sometimes it's worth wasting a move just to make a better move later on. So queen e7 is worse than waiting with a move. You actually make your position even more miserable. h3, which is kind of strange because you don't need this move. Long castle. Now this is pure suicide. But again, in close positions, slight mistakes can be forgiven. In fact, black can still make a very decent move here and still put the black king into safety. So if you have an idea, raise your hand and I'll call on you. So yes, we already did block the way for this bishop to go this way. But it doesn't mean we can go the other way around. Yeah, yes? G6. G6. And even though we're wasting a lot of time and we're kind of scared that maybe our opponent will play C4, manage to take, and already we can see the downside of wasting time. We can't take with the knight anymore because we just lose the bishop. So we have to take with the pawn. He'll play d4, we get an isolated pawn, but at least we could put our king into safety. And okay, this is not anyone's dream with black, but it's still a fight. Long castle is like, okay. The long castle idea is like, okay, just shoot here. So this is not good. So white decides to attack immediately, correctly. Now, is there a reason to panic with black? Not yet. There's only this bishop glaring down our king, which is kind of concerning, but it's not the end of the world. We have lots of pieces around. So in closed positions, we might have the time to look for counterplay. But first, we have to decide where will, will our counterplay be. Inside, king side, in the middle. Probably not in the middle, because 
that would take us a lot of time to get our pieces out there. So there is this idea of bishop c6. That's what he played, which is good. You bring the bishop closer as a defender. Also, your queen will defend against queen c7, mating ideas. You might actually think about d4, but that's kind of... You're not developed enough to open up the center. Is white ready to open up the center? Yes, white is, because he castled. So should be ready. He plays a3, which is fine as well, but you could also go d4 and open the position up here. On the other hand, a3 is a sly idea, because white says, okay, I want to open up the position on the queen side, and if you take stuff there, I'll be happy, because I want to attack just right there on the b line and the a line. In fact, you could have tried b4 here immediately. c takes and then a3. Kind of Banco-like ideas of just sacking the pawns just to open up the position. Because let's say takes, I immediately have the b line to attack you. Now this is double-edged though, because I'm down two pawns, which is not a good trade. So that's why I played a3. Black decided to go g5, and I like this, because Black realized, okay, you're not mating me soon enough, so I can try to scare you on the other side. Rook b1. I think rook b1 is a bit slow. You already have b4 here, because you can't even take it all the way, because this knight drops. And even though this is a close position, Time will matter in the end. You can't just wait around if your opponent strike, strikes first. So rook b1 was played. Rook g8. It makes more sense for black to prepare it because there's not enough pieces defending the g4 push right now. Rook g8, b4, h5. Which is kind of interesting. b5. Now... In this position, I would consider both b5 and b takes c5. What's the plus and minus of taking the pawn? Plus is the b file is immediately open. Mm -hmm. What's the minus, though? The b file is open now. But we did lose something with taking on c5, right? It's not a flexible concept. Because we don't have the idea of rolling with the pawns anymore. So when we took, we kind of decided, okay, we're going to mate. Or just develop an attack with the rook. And if we push the pawns, we give the opportunity of checkmating the other way around. So that's what he decided. He played b5. I'm sure he considered taking, which is not necessarily a bad move, but b5 seems more flexible. A takes, c takes, a4. Now a4 is too slow this time. It's, a, it's following the concept of, okay, I'm slowly building the attack, and I'll crash through eventually. But what if you don't? So that's why sometimes you still have to look for good and much better solutions. Yes? Queen a4? Yeah, queen a4 immediately was almost crushing because you're just threatening queen a8, which is quite difficult to handle. b6 is just checkmate. So queen a4 was winning. And uh, I think this is one of the problems even like grandmasters and super grandmasters fall into obviously in higher levels that they become too dogmatic they follow one plan that they decided they're going to follow all the way so white decided already 
after A3 that, okay, I'm just going to roll my pawns and it's going to work. And they didn't spend the time to say, okay, this is a new situation. I might have new opportunities to finish it off. And in that way, you would have found Queen A4 immediately. Obviously, this is not such a hard thing to find here. But if you're kind of blitzing, and I can see this was a blitz game, sometimes it's detrimental just to play a move, play one plan that you already decided to choose. So A4, G4, and actually, it's turning into a race now. Bishop takes F6, and this is a bad move. Bishop F6 is not good. And the reason is this bishop was a really good attacker and a defender, potentially. And you're just giving it away for free. Like, nobody forced you to do that. So how could we parry or at least react to this idea of g4? What does our opponent want to achieve? That's actually the first thing that we look at. Yes? Take on h3. Yeah, open, black, open black really wants to take on h3. So we're trying not to help our opponents. So what should we do then? h4. Just h4, obviously. And this way, let's say knight h7, and we really get scared. We can still go bishop g3, and there's no more attack for black, and we're happy. So this is definitely what white should have done. Takes on f6, queen takes f6. And notice that this awful queen on e7 is suddenly a monstrous queen on f6. It's not as good for white anymore. And then now comes this move h takes g4, which is the worst idea ever, because you're actually helping your opponent to checkmate you. Takes, takes, queen h6, that's fine. Let's play something else. Like bishop d6 seems really nice. And why decide where to put the queen so early? It's possible that your queen will belong to h4 or even e5. And now it gets really scary. Let's say bishop h3, queen h4, king h1. And I think you already smell that some, some, something stinks here for white there's like a crushing blow here yep yeah have to take rook g8 and white would desperately love to run away, but queen h5. queen h5 just stops that poor king from escaping because, well, some people might know who plays the dragon that the white king, I mean the black king, can actually escape this way. And because of this pawn fortress, your king is very safe there. But no such luck, because queen h5 and you lose. And it's checkmate. So that's how easy it is to lose an almost solely winning game. Now, he didn't do that, because black didn't play bishop d6, but that's why bishop d6 would have been way better. Because you don't need to decide where to put the queen just yet. Queen h6, queen f3, and it actually gave time for white f5, bishop h3. Now, I know this bishop on h3 looks very stupid, but the biggest threat for, from black was is taking on g2. So it's actually a good defender now. So the game turns again. Bishop d6, rook fc1, which is fine, because this is a very nice move. It's preparing d4, and what does rook fc1 prepare? the evacuation of the king. 
before you don't have space for the king, you might have to go this side, which way you don't want to go. And in fact, after rook fc1, you can go f1 and do the same thing that I showed you. Just evacuate the king into safety. Rook g5, e4. This is not a good idea. You're kind of helping your opponent. You should be playing d4 or a5, something. Just try to checkmate on the other side or run. But don't open up the position for the black bishops. e4, rook g8, e5. It's reasonable, but it's still not that good. It should be 7, d4, rook g6, which is a bit mysterious. Probably he's planning to triple, but it just does nothing. a5. He could have taken the pawn, obviously. But a5, there's nothing wrong with a5. Queen g7. But again, the problem is with the bishop on h3, those rooks do nothing. That's not a threat of taking. And especially after rook fc1, I can just walk away if you take on g2. b6 takes. c4, which again is strange. King b8 takes. And sadly, there's not enough material for black to do anything. Bishop c6, knight takes c4, which is a cute tactic, because d takes c4 runs into queen 6. Takes, knight e3, rook c7, rook d7. It's just agony now. And just checkmates. So, I think what we learned is not to make a quick decision, just develop your pieces and then see where your attack is going. Because I think that's what Black messed up a little bit, is just trying too hard to bring an attack with that queen h6 move when the queen was really doing well on f6. And also white shouldn't have opened up the position in front of his king. That was kind of helping black and that's not a good idea. All right, so I want to show two more games. So this game played between Bukit Larong and Wingd Ispion. In this game, I'm trying to gain an advantage using the London system, but it is only towards the end that I'm winning, thanks to some blunders by my opponent. How can I better utilize this system to get a winning position earlier on in the game? Cheers from the Norwegian fan of your club and YouTube channel. Lee Chess Blitz Rating 1350. So, d4, d5. Again, I don't think the London is winning, so I wouldn't expect London to win you outright. You can be better and you can outplay your opponent there, but there's no reason to believe that that's such a great opening. It's decent, but main lines are main lines for a good reason. C4, C6, and in fact, you're not playing, you're playing the main line, right? This is the main line. This is not the London. The London is bishop f4. Now, you can try to play these London kind of positions. Let's save it here, here, and e3, and c4. You can combine these two. They're not bad together. And in fact, you can transpose to this classical system played between Karpov and Korchnoi, Korchnoi Karpov, um, especially this classical game. Oh, not a5, but queen a5. All right, a3 and rook e8. And this was actually um, an idea played by the Karpov team. So, yeah, actually, this was knight c6 first, rook d1, and then rook e8. But anyways, so you can play these London types of positions with c4, but usually what people do is go knight d2, c5, c3, castles, bishop d3. Now if you want to know more about this, Eric Rosen does a good job with it, but um, 
I'd still think it's better to play main lines because then you get an advantage. Here, not really. So anyways, c4, c6, knight f3, e6, bishop f4. And this is not a good way, the way you're playing this. Because this time I can capture on c4. And if e3, then b5. And you'll never get that pawn back. The other problem is, as you might say that, oh, okay, e3 doesn't work, but a4, a4 would work. Well, the problem is then there is this nasty move of knight d5, double attacking the bishop and the knight. You might have to move away, but then I, I can defend this c4 pawn in many ways. I can just go like for this kind of concepts, just holding on to it or try to play b5 at some moment. Let's say b5 takes, I take on c3 takes, and c takes. And maybe you have some compensation, but usually, practically, you really don't. So this is not a good thing. So in general, if you want to play the London, you have to prepare and develop your pieces first, and then you can play c4. So you have to play bishop f4, knight f3 first, and e3, so that the bishop will protect the c4 pawn. But here you can do this. You should have been punished for this play. Knight d7, c takes d5. And this is again not too ambitious to take on d5. In general, in these Queen's Gambit structures, to taking on d5, even though it's playable, it's not too ambitious. And black plays c takes, which is okay, but after e takes d5, for example, white has no advantage at all because you lost the central control. Black has just as much control as white does, so it's around equal. In fact, you should play e3 here. And if here, just bishop d3 and castles. And you're supposed to be slightly better here. So if you actually manage to combine this e, bishop f4, e3, and c4, you are expected to be better. And I would say that more confidently than in the other case when you have the bishop f4 out but the pawn on c3. That's just playable. So you took on d5. He took with the c pawn, which I don't think is a good idea. e takes is better. c takes, e3, a6. Kind of defending against this knight b5 ideas and jumps. But then the question comes up, why does knight b5 doesn't work? In this position. So there are two reasons. Yes? Bishop b4 check. Yeah, bishop b4 check. And what's the concept behind the bishop b4 check? Well, something's going to have to move back to the back. Yes. Yeah, so something does have to move back, and then in that way... So if the bishop moves back, that knight on b5 alone is not threatening enough. If you move other pieces, that's too awkward. And especially, this is one fine trick I want to show you guys. So knight c7 is not too smart because I have e5 ideas. And this is a trip, typical trick. Because takes, takes, even though black only won a piece, this knight on a8 will never survive. Because we'll just go b6, bishop b7 quickly. And even if white would try to help this beautiful knight there, then knight e4 would double attack on d2. And this is very painful and lost. So that's the reason knight b5 doesn't work here. e3, now it would work a little bit more. So black plays a6, h3, a good classical way of playing the London. You're providing some shelter for the bishop. Because if you would play like bishop d3, knight h5 gains strength. If you move the bishop to g5, I exchange you, which is not the concept of these London kind of plays. And if you go to g3 again, I can take on g3. So therefore, your h3 move was thematic and very good. h3, knight b6. This knight just looks dumb on b6, so that's, I'm not a big fan of that. So I would rather play bishop e7 this time, 
castle and then go b6 bishop b7 and just be solid because this time the knight on b6 just looks dumb bishop b4 and if i play knight b6 i'd still play bishop d6 instead at least trying to exchange this bishop so bishop b4 castle castle rook c1 now you have a very good position with white because this bishop on c8 is just bad. Bishop d7, queen c2, queen d3. Now that's too much hesitation. You should jump into e5 and prepare the idea of bishop g5. Let's say rook e8, then bishop g5 is getting really strong. And sometimes even this nasty check on h7 is bad. Bad news for black. Because if the king moves its mate, you have to go to f8 and uh, I don't want to be black. So knight e5 is the way to play these type of positions, just preparing bishop g5 and white is supposed to be better here. Queen b3 is a bit slow. Not bad, but slow. Queen e7, knight e5 now. Yeah, but you could have done it the other way around. Knight c4 takes. But that was a free pawn. Now... If you're worse and you don't have much space, what should, should we aim in these type of positions with black? If you don't have space, there's one good method that people advise you to do. Yeah. Trade. Trade. So you should trade on c3 and see how it goes. Let's say takes, takes, oh, not c, knight c4 takes. Now b takes is stronger, but if we get lucky, we can maybe exchange the bishops and already, the situation kind of got slightly better. I'm sure that black is worse. Because maybe even queen a5 wins something. But at least you can fight. Here, when you play knight c4, you still are saddened and have this bad bishop on d7, which is not good. So bishop takes c4, rook c6, bishop h2, rook fc8, bishop d3. And as you can see, black did get some activity, but it's a free pawn, so it's not enough. Queen f8, a3, good. If you're up, up material, exchanges are good for you. So if you're up a pawn, feel happy to, feel free to exchange stuff. The only thing to be concerned of is don't exchange everything, because then you'll draw. Takes, rook takes c3, this is very good play so far. Takes e4, f3. Very good, although loosening the king's position. And you don't want to do that. You're just giving away targets. So I would prefer rook e1. So you have a safe king. Because sometimes you get unlucky and fall into some tactical tricks because you made your king's position shaky. f3, rook d8, bishop e5. I don't like that move. I prefer something like queen c3 because bishop e5 is again a little bit exposing your pieces knight d7 a very good move asking so where is that bishop going bishop h2 not a good move because repetition and now queen c3 okay that's a good one though and that's a good thing that you have the patience to build up your position even if it's frustrating that sometimes you make like slight inaccuracies queen e7 Bishop takes a6, very good. Because black can't take the pawn. I mean, uh, this bishop and the pawn. Because I can take this pawn. And I'm just so many pawns up, it's dead winning. So queen e7 takes, queen d7, d5 takes, takes, knight d5. Oh, this has gone bad quickly. So... You shouldn't have played d5 in the first place. You could have just moved the bishop back. Let's say to c4. Takes, takes. You just defend the bishop and you're just winning. You have the extra pawn. You have the bishop pair. You don't have to do anything interesting. d5 is too interesting in this position. You're giving away a pawn for no reason. And also you're not moving a piece that's attacked. And that's your bishop d5 takes 
Now you're actually not better anymore. Takes, takes, queen d3 takes, and you're down a piece. You're supposed to be lost now. Queen takes. You have some pawns, but this is objectively lost. Ooh, we should be five. Yes, I thought I saw hands. No, okay. Yeah, this is not good now. Takes, and let me see what happened. Oh, also white actually lost. Oh, okay. So that's sad, because you actually had with white a beautiful position. And this is very sad, because you did everything right. You just didn't defend your pieces. And the biggest mistake was forgetting of your own pieces' safety. Like, the only thing you needed to do is to bring the bishop back, take, take, rook c1, and you're on the track of winning this game. D5 to me seemed a bit panicky, like, oh my god, what's going to happen? But what I learned that you don't really need to panic, just defend your pieces, that's it. And here, black only had one threat of taking your bishop. Obviously, you lose the pawn, but what can you do? The bishop is worth more than the pawn, so bishop c4 is something I'd do instead. And I'd assume that you would win. Otherwise, this was a really good game by you. I think that White played well here. The only thing that I really didn't like was playing loosely a little bit. Like F3, I don't think you needed to do that. Rook E1 was better. And then just continue from here. Try defending your pieces. And if you start defending your pieces, you win way more games in general because by now black's position is so bad that the only way they can beat you here if you blunder something and unfortunately for you blundered something and that was the bishop but apart from that a good game so this is all for the viewers choice that i wanted to show these games and we actually looked at these semi-close, close positions, how you should and you, how you shouldn't play. Now, as we learned, you should not close the position if you have more pieces in the center. Try to open up the position. On the other hand, if you're on the other side, try to close the position as quickly as possible. Also, in the last game we learned, protect your pieces even if you're winning it's never too late to blunder, unfortunately. All right, that was viewer's choice, and thank you for being here.